This video is about one of my favorite examples of an evolutionary arms race. In this case, between viruses and your immune system, actually the immune system of all vertebrates. You probably know what a virus is and what it does by this point, especially if you watch my videos, but just in case, my video primer on the subject is linked in the card and in the description there. But very briefly, a virus is a packet of genetic information, the instruction manual for making a virus, essentially. A virus is too simple to reproduce on its own, so this instruction manual needs to find its way into a cell where the molecular machinery of the cell, the factory if you like, will read that instruction manual and start making viral proteins. Those viral proteins, some of which will assemble into new viruses, and so the virus multiplies. So how does an organism protect itself from viruses? It's actually quite difficult because once a virus is inside a cell, it's hidden. It can't be seen by the outside world. And this is where the first innovation in the evolutionary arms race comes in. And it comes from the immune system of the host. At some point in our evolutionary history, our cells found a way to tell the outside world what was going on on the inside of the cell. Here's how it works. So part of the everyday functioning of the molecular machines inside your cell is the making of proteins. So you've got one molecular machine called a ribosome that reads your DNA, it reads the instruction manual and spits out proteins. And those proteins are important for the functions that help you to live and grow. But at some point, these proteins will become damaged or they won't be useful anymore. Anymore. So they go through this recycling process. And there's another molecular machine that is part of that process. It's called proteasome. So protein that's been tagged for recycling is passed through the proteasome and the proteasome chops it into small fragments of protein. That's just the everyday activity of the cell, by the way. That's nothing to do with the innovation. The innovation is this. Every so often, instead of one of these fragments of protein being broken down even further for reuse, it gets fed into this separate chamber that's cordoned off by a membrane. And in the wall of the membrane is another molecule that basically holds open a hole for the protein fragment to pass through. Once the protein fragment is inside, it attaches itself to a molecule that's embedded in the wall of the membrane. It's called a class one major histocompatibility complex, but I'll just call it MHC1. This membrane enclosed bubble then travels to the edge of the cell where the two membranes fuse, creating a hole which widens out until the inside of that membrane enclosed bubble is now the outside surface of the cell. The two have fused. So now you have this MHC1 molecule embedded in the membrane of the cell and presenting a fragment of protein to the outside world. I wasn't gonna use animation originally, so I filmed this. Just a little taste of what we got going on inside here. Plenty more where that came from. Mm -hmm. What do you mean I'm going mad? That was a clever way to illustrate the... Th I am not going mad. This process is happening all the time in a healthy cell. So if you look at the outside of a cell, you would expect to see it covered in these MHC1 molecules presenting different fragments of the proteins that are created by the molecular machines inside your cell. At the same time, our ancient ancestors were evolving new immune cells that we call killer T cells, and they patrol around your body looking for these fragments of protein to see what they are. So what happens when a cell is infected with a virus? Well, now the molecular machinery of the cell is producing viral proteins as well as your normal human proteins. And they're just as likely to be tagged for recycling as any other protein. And so they get fed into the proteasome machine and chopped up into little fragments. So now your cell has floating around in it little fragments of viral protein as well as little fragments of human protein. And one of these fragments of viral protein is just as likely to find itself attached to an MH 
MHC1 molecule as any other fragment of protein, and then it's presented to the outside of the cell along with all of those other fragments. This is where the killer T cell really comes into play. Actually, we have millions of different types of killer T cell. Each different type recognizes a single fragment of viral protein. And so these killer T cells are constantly bumping into the cells in your body. The killer T cell has a little receptor on the surface that bumps into the MHC molecule of your cell and it checks the little fragment of protein. And if it doesn't match the specific viral fragment that that killer T cell recognizes, then it, it moves on. You get a tick, you're good to go. I think you'll find everything's in order. So your cells are constantly being checked by different killer T cells. And as long as the cell is only producing human proteins and then presenting fragments of those human proteins to the killer T cells, those killer T cells will always give it a tick because it's never recognized as a viral protein fragment. But when a cell is infected with a virus and the right killer T cell comes along to recognize just the right fragment of viral protein that's being presented on the surface of the host cell, well, then the killer T cell latches on to the cell. It locks on to the MHC1 molecule. No, don't. Oh, oh, oh. The killer T cell then releases some molecules called cytotoxins. And when those cytotoxins find their way into the host cell, they induce something called apoptosis, which you can think of as a self-destruct sequence, programmed cell death. The cell dies for the good of the body. It can no longer produce new viral particles if it's gone. The next step in the evolutionary arms race comes from the virus. Amazingly, some viruses have evolved the ability to hinder this process by which the cell dobs them in, the way cells present evidence to the immune system of the skullduggery that's happening inside. Different viruses have found different ways of preventing MHC1 molecules from grassing them up. And in fact, individual viruses may have multiple techniques within the one virus. HIV is an example. So the genetic instruction manual of HIV codes for a number of proteins that inhibit the function of MHC1. For example, one protein initiates a pre-existing process within cells called endocytosis. Endocytosis is the process by which cells bring proteins back inside the cell from the surface. So this HIV protein induces the endocytosis of MHC1 molecules. So if you examine a cell that's infected with HIV or a similarly innovative virus, then you will see fewer MHC molecules on the surface holding onto those protein fragments. And from the virus's point of view, the virus hopes, in inverted commas, because viruses don't really have hope. Um, I'm anthropomorphizing here, obviously, but as I've said before, it's okay to anthropomorphize so long as everyone knows uh, that it's happening and we all understand that it's kind of like a shorthand for the fact that evolution selects for advantageous traits. Anyway, the virus hopes that the uh, proteins will pull in enough of these MHC molecules that there will be no more viral protein fragments presenting on the surface of the cell and it will evade detection by killer T cells. And that's exactly what happens. So the next step in this evolutionary arms race story, the final step comes from the immune system. So the vertebrate immune system evolves a new kind of immune cell called a natural killer cell. And a natural killer cell looks out for cells that have an unusually small number of MHC molecules presenting on the surface because that in itself is fishy. When it finds one of these cells, they latch on and release molecules called cytokines, slightly different to the killer T cells releasing cytotoxins. They're a signaling molecule and once they're in the host cell, they instruct the cell to self-destruct through apoptosis. So there you go, the natural killer cell. How cool is that? Let me tell you what I've been learning with Skillshare recently. They're the sponsor of this video. It's the same old story really, but just a different context. This time the context is photo editing. So as, as part of my job on YouTube, I do edit stills photos sometimes. It's that classic thing like I've just 
been mucking through, trying to work it out for myself and basically getting it to work. But the whole time, not necessarily understanding really what I'm doing. And I'm sure I've learned some bad habits along the way. It's got to that point where I'm just thinking, you know, I just need to sit down in front of someone for like an hour or so, literally just an hour or so. Uh, and they can tell me, look, this is the way you should be doing it. And this is why. So that I then have that foundation so that any self-learning I do after that is just going to rapidly increase my skill because I have that foundation of understanding. When I get to the end of this course, it's called Fundamentals in Photo Editing, I might decide to go a bit further. There are courses that dive even deeper if I want to. And it's not just about photo editing, there's loads of different creative stuff, um, animation, interior design, illustration, web design, loads of stuff, um, business related stuff like you know productivity. And maybe you've been learning a new skill on and off, mucking through, figuring it out for yourself. And you think maybe it's time to sit down with someone literally for an hour or so to just get those fundamentals absolutely right. And you know, they're bite-sized chunks so you can fit them in uh, around everything else you're doing like I do. You get access to absolutely everything for just $10 a month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 500 people to go to school.sh slash stevemold9 will get two months absolutely free. So check out Skillshare today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.